Good morning and welcome to St. John's McGuanago's Morning Praise. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall declare your praise. Hasten to save me, O God. O Lord, come quickly to help me. Praise be to God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let us worship him. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. The deep places of the earth are in his hand. The heights of the hills are also his. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hand formed the dry land. O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Give thanks to the Lord. Call on his name. Make known among the nations what he has done. This week, during Matins, we will take a look at the temple, which was built by Solomon, but had a precursor called the tabernacle. We'll talk about its importance today. Then we'll talk about its structure, its rooms on Tuesday. We'll get to the furniture that is in each of these rooms and in the outward courtyard. We'll talk about the sacrifices And finally, we'll talk about the historical significance of the temple. And in each, we'll we'll grab a portion from the New Testament, actually, not the Old Testament, to guide us in the importance and the meaning of that temple, that grand building that Solomon built that was one of the wonders of the ancient world. We'll begin today with a reading from John chapter 1, very familiar to you. We'll jump around from verses 1, 2, 3, 4, and then we'll jump down to 14. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that light was the light of men. That light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us, We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. The word of the Lord. After Moses led the Israelites out of Egyptian slavery, they were a fledgling nation. They needed to have a military. They needed to have a law. They needed to have rules. They needed to have a structure. They needed to have an economy. But they also needed something more important than all of that, and that is a religion. Of course, they already had one, the true religion of the true God, having coming out of the Egyptian concept where there was many different gods, and gods were closely tied either to the pharaoh, but could also be closely tied to animals. And so it wasn't actually that far-fetched that they would try to depict God as a golden calf. You remember that story. But they were completely wrong, of course, when they went by their culture and the culture that they had grown out of, that culture of Egypt. But rather, they were to be worshiping the true God. And they would center their life around this true God. And this is how God mandated that physically he would be around them. He would be with them, yes, by a pillar of fire, by day and a pillar of cloud by night that would guide them in their journey out of Egypt and eventually into the promised land. But God also would have a home, and that home was called the tabernacle. And you would think about this as a very large tent. Uh, It was movable, and it indeed moved around for really about 500 years until a temple was actually built. The tabernacle and the temple both had a similar structure, and more importantly, they had a similar importance. In fact, it was the same importance. It was where God was. Yes, God is everywhere. We confess correctly that he is omnipresent. That is, he is everywhere. He is spirit. But God also chooses to be found in specific places. So this is one of those phrases that I think is helpful when we think about theology. We say, yes, God is everywhere, but he seeks to be found in specific places. For us today, it is in his word, in his communion, in his baptism, in absolution, the ministry of the church. He says, this is where I want you to find me, not on a high mountain, 
but in these places where I come to you physically. So he would come to the people physically and be in the tent of meeting or the tabernacle. This is where God would speak to the people. This would be the center of their camp, and it was quite literally the center of the camp. The tabernacle was in the center, and all the tribes were assigned places to the north, to the south, and to the east, and to the west of that center place where the priests would go in and offer sacrifices and be in the presence of God. We can narrow it down even to the Ark of the Covenant. The Ark of the Covenant, which we'll talk about later, was a box overlaid with gold, and on top was what was called the mercy seat. It had two angels. You could think about this as the throne of God. This is where God is, or better yet, because he is everywhere, this is where God seeks to be found. This is where you go and you meet God. So what we have here is God manifesting himself in a very real way with the ancient Israelites. And he has a house. It is a movable tent, just like the Israelites were in tents until they would go into the promised land and built their, their homes and their palaces. It was in a movable tent, but it was still God. And in fact, it was God tabernacling among us. So when we read John chapter 1 and we hear about how we are going to find God in a different place, the presence of God is on the move from the tabernacle to the temple to the womb of Mary, and now the person of Jesus Christ walking around. We hear highlights and hints of John comparing the body and the person of Jesus Christ to that tabernacle. God was there. The, the word of God was there from the beginning. He is the light. And so we'll see later that there was candelabras, there was lampstands in the temple that symbolized God being the light of their world. But when we get to verse 15, it becomes even more obvious. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. The word there, made dwelling, really is a hint at a tent or even a tabernacle. We might even translate it, the word Jesus became flesh and tabernacled among us. You couldn't miss that if you were a Jewish person thinking about the tabernacle, the house of God before the temple. It is truly Emmanuel, God with us. One more thing before we move on, and that is the idea of different levels before you get to the presence of God. We'll talk about this more tomorrow when we talk about the different rooms in the structure of the tabernacle and later the temple. But there was different levels of how close you could get to God. You had the most holy place where the Ark of the Covenant was. Then you had the holy place, which was the next level, where the priest would go in. Then you had the courtyard, the, basically the priest's courtyard, where they would offer sacrifices and do some ceremonial washings. Then you had another courtyard, this is later on when the temple was built, a courtyard for the, for the Israelite men, and then a courtyard for the Israelite women and children. And then finally, on the outside, was the Gentile courtyard. There's levels of holiness, so to speak, or levels of coming into the presence of God. In fact, you could see the whole nation, the Holy Land, being the next level, and across the Jordan River or into the sea in the Mediterranean Sea. This was the outworld, the, the Gentiles, the nations, the islands. And in each time you got closer and passed a level, you got closer to the presence of God. This was God with them. This was Emmanuel. And notice the significance that Jesus is much like the tabernacle, the Ark of the Covenant. He is the presence of God. We'll see he is also the priest, the high priest. But now that Jesus walks around in the New Testament, he is a walking tabernacle. He is the temple. This is where God seeks to be found. And now in the church, this is the tabernacle. This is the temple. This is where God seeks to be found in his word and at his meal, his baptism and his absolution, the ministry of the church. The Te Deum. We praise you, O God. We acclaim you as Lord. All creation worships you, Father everlasting. To you, all angels, all the powers of heaven, cherubim and seraphim, sing in endless praise. Holy, 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 Lord God of heavenly hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. The glorious company of apostles praise you. The noble fellowship of prophets praise you. The white-robed army of martyrs praise you. Throughout the world, the Holy Church acclaims you. 
Father of majesty unbounded, your glorious true and only Son, and the Holy Spirit, advocate and guide. You, Christ, are the King of glory, the eternal Son of the Father. When you became man to set us free, you humbled yourself to be born of a virgin. You overcame the sting of death and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You sit at the right hand of God in the glory of the Father. We believe that you will come to be our judge. Come then, Lord, and help your people, bought with the price of your own blood, and bring us with your saints to glory everlasting. In the morning, O Lord, I call to you. Be merciful to me and hear my prayer. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And we also pray. O Lord, our heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, you have brought us safely to this new day. Defend us with your mighty power, and grant that this day we neither fall into sin nor run into any kind of danger. And in all we do, direct us to what is right in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Let us praise the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.